Yo, welcome back to the channel guys. Another highly requested video today. We're going to be breaking down and give you guys a full tutorial on ASAP Ferg Floor Seats music video that dropped about a month ago. This one I've been super excited to make. There's been a lot of really great music videos that have been dropping lately. We have some Travis Scott music video stuff on the way as well as a bunch of other awesome ideas I think you guys are really going to like. This one was a really great music video. I've already watched this through and I thought this was done very well. If you're new to the channel, the beginning part of this is going to be a breakdown, giving you guys some tips on how they might have shot it some basic creative ideas surrounding the music video as a whole and then the second part of this we're gonna hop into Adobe Premiere and After Effects and give you guys full step-by-step -step tutorials on how to actually do the things that we're talking about and the things that are seen within the music video so as always comment below what you guys want to see next if there's any video that you saw that you like the effects of you want to see a tutorial on be sure to comment that this music video ASAP Ferg floor seats directed by Valentin Petit not sure if that's pronounced correctly but did a great job with the video I thought with the whole AUG aesthetic that they've kind of established. This played in very well with it. There's a lot of great things that they did with the video, which we're going to speak on. Okay, guys, so let's go ahead and get right into this. Let's play this through and check it out. So here is our intro scene, and there's a lot going on here. Some inspirations that stick out to me right away. So first things first, the way they shot this, this intro scene is very reminiscent of that Kids Turned Out Fine music video um, for ASAP Rocky, directed by Dexter Navy. You can check out the video I made below if you're interested about that. So this intro itself, this is something that'll be easier to actually show you than explain to you. So when we get to the step-by-step -step tutorial part, and we're actually showing you the different plugins that you can use to create this distortion, they use a simple little zoom effect, which you'll see so a nice little lens zoom as you can see the edges are getting distorted if you're looking for any kind of transitions like that check out my website below we have a speed demon transition pack a bunch of awesome things just like that link to that will be on my website below we zoom into the shot of the jar to actually get this here what they may have done is taken a piece of what they created here and this essentially could just be a picture or a video of some grass that they actually distorted heavily not only is it a cool, interesting, creative little look, but it also ties in with that intro where it's kind of like you're looking into the grass in this cool, glowing, distorted fashion. So let's play that out. So let's go ahead and break down that sequence that we just saw and there's a lot going on so the first effect that stands out for us is we go from this calm kind of mysterious part at the beginning and it ramps up just like how the song does. We'll play it out. As that intro of the song builds up, we bring in this kind of fast moving footage. And to do that, they're actually just using some tracking and some masking to cut out the grass here. And then what they do is they actually cut out whatever was here. We'll show you that at the later part of the video where we do the step by step. Now, as we move along, you'll see that there's some nice geometric shapes in this that they use to actually crop in. So you'll see this next frame, they pop in using masking. And essentially what this really is, is just a lot of pictures that they took on set. So they have all these extras here. They probably told them to look at the camera straight face and then they probably told them to look at the camera um, Shouting yelling whatever to get these really expression pictures now We're gonna hop into Photoshop later and we'll show you some of the techniques that they use for the film some of these overlay some of these paper overlays um, some of the masking techniques they did to create this and you'll also notice that every single one of these pictures is only lasting one frame. So I'll click one frame over bam bam bam. So we play that full speed. It's gonna be super fast just like that. Now they're also mixing together the pictures just using masking, using cropping, um, which is a pretty cool technique in itself. Now this may have been inspired by a member of AUG, which is the ASAP Mobs creative production group. They also do a lot of other stuff on the side, but either way, there's a member of AUG named Hiji who's been involved with a lot of the music video and a lot of the visual things that they do. His personal style mixes these blends of different body parts, different facial features to create this cool abstracting artwork. So that's pretty interesting. I'm not sure if Hiji himself was a part of the music video creatively or production wise but that definitely could have been inspired by him so let's go ahead and play out this next sequence and check it out okay so a lot of interesting stuff happening there let's go and actually give a little breakdown of that so i don't want to be pausing too much because i do want to show you guys the step by step i know you're probably most excited about that this is very very important and this is something that every aspiring director or editor should know this music video in particular does a great job at using sound effects to really give you an immersive experience and i say this in so many different videos a lot of you have probably heard it before but this is a great prime example of how to really do it in a realistic fashion the dog barking people 
people falling off their bikes, there's a sound effect that's layered underneath all of that video to pack even more of a punch visually. That's something that can elevate your music videos or your videos in general a huge, huge amount. So let's play that one more time just so you guys can hear. So you have the dog barking, you have people falling out their bikes, you have the sound of the bikes in general, you have whenever they use those paper overlays, you have that kind of rummaging through paper sound effect, you have the sound effect of these pigeons, everything you see in the video has a matching sound effect to really tie the entire experience together. So before we talk about that crazy 360 that we got going on here, I want to talk about all these little b-roll shots because these look pretty um, distinct and different from a lot of what you guys may be used to seeing. Now if you want to create this look yourself, you can do it with in camera when you do shoot it. All you need to do is shoot at a low shutter speed. The lower your shutter speed, the more crazy motion blur you're going to get. The higher your shutter speed in your camera, the more crisp it's going to be. So they also may have added a little posterized time effect just to actually kind of chop this up and make it even more distorted. We'll talk a little bit about that more when we hop into Premiere, but it gives you this very distinct kind of crazy motion blur um, look that is going on throughout a lot of this. And for the high motion parts, like when they're biking, you'll see that they use that technique a lot. You'll see that it's very high motion blur, all done within camera, just using a low shutter speed, just like this. Use this little masked walk by frame blocking to transition into the next scene and this was really great they use an awesome slow motion sound effect to really play this off but they also use some really great camera movement to match and get this rotation now this works really well with this clip because you already have these spinning bike wheels which are going on so it just kind of matches and it just adds this crazy dynamic like you have a camera on the actual wheel and to create this what they could have either done is yes they could have mounted a camera on a wheel but what I'm guessing is they had some sort of gimbal and you can do this with a lot of gimbals just search camera gimbal camera gimbal movements and you'll find a lot of different tutorials and content on that some more great sound design here for all the bike scenes going through all these streets a lot of cool interesting visual shots some more of those paper overlays which we'll show you in photoshop and here we'll pause this they use another little 360 camera technique now this part here is also very interesting a lot going on so let's break this down what happens is they're going to use some masking to take away a lot of the background they're keeping some of the subject like this guy here this guy here as well as masking around here but essentially what they're doing is they're putting a different shot that they got this close-up of the fence and they're popping it in the background for three frames and then making it disappear go another frame they pop to just the fence with everything taken away then they switch to this crazy kind of high motion blur, low shutter speed shot of the inside of this. And they're mixing in that shot every little few frames. So it's kind of like a reverse freeze frame where they'll make something pop in for a few seconds to kind of show it to you. They'll make it disappear. Then it'll come back. So just playing around with making things pop in and out by making them appear for a few frames. We're going to go over that within Premiere. It's pretty simple, but you can do a lot visually with just making things pop in and out. Now, I'm guessing what they're doing is they're actually just standing still for a lot of this. And that's pretty impressive being able to do that. Now, what sells this shot and what makes this a really great shot is the smooth camera movement going and changing from the perspective, showing that close up of in his face and then doing that little swivel pan out to show um, this entire shot as a whole. Play this. Now that's a pretty cool and smooth effect transition there. Now let's break that down as well. This is pretty simple. So we'll move frame by frame. I'm guessing once it gets to around here, it becomes an actual digital zoom instead of a camera zoom. So once you get to around here, it's probably using software to zoom in. Now you'll see that this is our next scene we're transitioning to. This actually shows up around this frame here. So this is where it pops up and they have this nice Gaussian blur. They're lowering the opacity to make it blend in with the dark part of the inside of his mouth. As you move forward, this kind of lowers the blur and then we use a zoom effect just to fully go through. Another big reason as to why this transition works so well is you'll see the outskirts of this clip in general are very dark. So that actually matches with the dark part of the inside of his mouth. Now, all these outside scenes, you have some cool visual things going on. In terms of actual effects, you have this little channel blur here. We'll show you that within Adobe Premiere and After Effects, where basically it just adds this kind of blue fringing around everything. You'll see it around his shirt here and around a lot of the lights. Now, this next sequence is probably my favorite from the entire music video. Let's play this out and then break it down. All the glisten on the wrist, waterfall, not the drip. Yeah! Montage with a bitch, massage with a bitch. 
so some really cool stuff going on there and this effect in itself is from the asap forever music video it's pretty cool um the only difference being is that they're not doing a lot of tracking onto an object but it still has that same principle of the effect from asap forever where you're going from one scene zooming out to another scene zooming out from another scene and the previous scene is a part of the next scene that may sound complicated but like i said we'll hop into post later show you exactly what we're talking about but basically we zoom out to the scene where they masked out her eye move out more the cool part about this clip here is that this actually isn't using any masking but they created the same sort of like moving through an object by zooming through her hand like that so that was a cool creative idea and that's why i think this is probably my favorite part and then of course what they do another mask inside the actual mouth closing it in with that super sick sound effect of that clamping down. So that was by far my favorite part. I thought that was pretty cool. We're going to show you that transition later, talk about where to get the sound effects, all of that good stuff. Let's keep going through here because there's still more we should talk about. Um, but essentially we got the main gist of what's going on. Let's check this out here. Whenever he says, could it catch a glitch? We got some more sound effects as well as what they're doing, duplicating the footage. They're changing the blending mode, which we will show you later. And then they're kind of just creating a little bit of craziness going on, bringing in some crossfade, some more screen, some more different blending modes of different footage, and then blending it all together for this little sequence that we got going on here. They have this cool outro scene, which I really like a lot. And I mean, I could probably make a tutorial just on this part alone, but this is just using this little parallax effect and what they're doing is using masking to isolate one part of the scene for example the couch and then they're making that grow a little bit by using keyframes to separate it from the background which creates this kind of like weird perspective popping effect so we'll show you that in this tutorial as well it's going to be a long one but it's going to be a fun and cool one i hope you guys learn a lot from this let's go ahead and get right into it Okay guys, here we are within Adobe Premiere. We're going to be using Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, and Adobe Photoshop for all of this. Essentially, you can do all of it within one software, but I feel like it's good to know this wide range of different softwares. Each software has its strengths. If you guys have the Adobe CC subscription, you should have Photoshop, Premiere, and After Effects. So we're going to be using After Effects for the things like tracking, Adobe Premiere for some of the easier effects, or some of the sequencing and fast frame things. And we're going to use Photoshop for a lot of the picture editing work, as well as this first effect, which we're going to show you so we're going to start backwards from the music video from what we just broke down and showed you so the last thing that we broke down was this parallax effect that's going to be the first thing that we show you within this tutorial so we're going to show you how to do this and the only other time we're going to be using photoshop is for um, when we're adding these paper overlays onto the pictures if you guys use other software and you don't have photoshop just look for any free photo editing software that allows you to mask things and add overlays things like that okay so i found some old footage and i found this screenshot we're going to go ahead and apply that parallax effect onto this and if you guys need a little reminder of what we're going to be showing you this is exactly what we will be doing this exit part here where we have the pictures we have this just slight little motion that kind of adds this cool perspective let me show you exactly how we can do this so hop into photoshop select the part of the picture that we want to isolate and create some cool movement for now this is just a screenshot from video so it's not the best quality but it'll serve fine what you want to do first let me move my camera so that you can see so now you guys can see our layers you're going to want to select your first layer here and just click Control j to duplicate it so that we have a copy of our original select your first layer here go over and grab your pen tool or you can just click p on your on your keyboard here you're going to hold down Control and alt use your mouse wheel just to zoom in and we're going to do a little rough mask around our subject all right, so we masked our subject. We're going to right click on him and click create and click make selection. Feather radius three is fine. I'm actually gonna bump that down to maybe two and that's looking good. So once you have that selection, go ahead and click control J and you're gonna see now what we created is a new layer just from the selection. So we have him completely masked out and we can actually delete the background so that we just have normal and then isolated just like that. So now what we want to do is we want to actually hold down control on our keyboard and you want to click in this little box where it says layer two, just click right there and that'll bring our selection back up. Next, what you want to do is you want to actually select our bottom layer, layer one here. This is with our subject and our background and you're going to want to click delete. So click delete. And what we just did, if, we're, if we hide our top layer, you'll see we just deleted the subject out from the background. So now we have an isolated subject layer and an isolated background layer. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and actually double click and rename. So I'll name this BG for background. Make sure that your layer is selected, your background layer. You're going to want to go to edit, 
you're going to want to go down to fill and then you're going to want to use content aware and click OK. And that is basically just going to fill in what it thinks um, the background should be. Now, if this is a little bit too messed up, you can actually use this little tool here, this little um, game controller. This is the clone stamp tool. So if you select it, you can hold down alt on your keyboard. So maybe like this white here, click. And now basically that becomes a brush with what you selected. So now we can paint over anything we don't want like that. So another example, this is kind of feathered here. We'll hold down alt, select this area, and then we can paint in here. Okay, and that's looking good. So we have our subject, we have our background layer with our content fill aware, and we're ready to actually bring this into After Effects for the parallax effect. So bring this back. We're going to go up to file, save as, and we're not actually going to export this as a picture. We just want to save the actual Photoshop file. So now go ahead and find somewhere. Now we can actually hop into After Effects, and we're going to go ahead and create a new composition here. I'm going to name this composition parallax effect. Click OK and I'll go to my comp settings. Make sure that's 1920 by 1080 or whatever aspect ratio you would like. We're ready to go. So let's go ahead and bring in that Photoshop file that we just exported. So take that and just drag it into your project bin here. Just make sure it's showing up in the top left. And now After Effects is going to ask you this. It's going to say merge layers into footage or editable layer styles. You want to have editable layer styles. So all the layers that we had in Photoshop will be the same in After Effects. So, so now we can actually drag the composition that it just made into our um, composition that we've already have double click to go into that composition like that and you'll see your two layers here so we still have our subject and we still have our background which is great now it's as simple as creating some keyframes just to give some small movement to the subject layer that we have already isolated so let's go ahead and click on our subject layer let's actually open up our options here we're going to open up transform and we also want to click toggle switches and modes down here and we want to enable this into a 3d layer so click that again if you don't see the switches and once you see this 3d cube layer here go ahead and enable that for both our background and our foreground that'll just give us more options in terms of what we can do for transforming so if we turn that off you'll see this is all the options just position scale rotation if we make that a 3d layer now we can actually change the orientation for the x y and z axes so that's pretty cool now make sure that your time player is at the very beginning of our composition. We're going to keyframe every single one of these options here. Move as long as you want the animation to be. So maybe around here. And then we're going to change some things. So I'll grab the position. This is actually the Z position. It's the third option here. And I'm actually gonna pull that a little bit towards me. So this is what that'll look like. You'll see that he's kind of just growing towards the camera and it looks a little weird because he's not stepping anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll maybe just make that not so, um, dramatic i'll maybe make him grow by like negative 60. i'll also do the same with the background i'm going to open up my transform for a background i'm going to keyframe everything drag to the end we're going to push our scale up to 122 maybe even 131 the higher you put that up the more kind of stretching you'll get and there you go just like that guys we have an easy little parallax effect you can even add a little spin on this and let's go back to the subject here and say you maybe want to add a little bit of rotation onto this we can drag to the end because these are already keyframed we can grab our y rotation and we can kind of change the perspective like that so it's very small it's very subtle you guys can experiment with it if you want maybe the orientation maybe you want them to kind of tip down like that You'll have something more like this. My best recommendations for creating something like this is don't overdo the movement or it'll look a little bit too um, oversaturated artificial. If you just add a tiny bit of movement, you'll get that kind of subtle parallax. And there you go, guys. That is my final product with the actual parallax. You can do a lot of cool stuff with that in terms of kind of bending that perspective. Of course, it depends on your picture. Try it with a bunch of different examples. Maybe try and mess around with different orientations or things like that. And you guys will get some really cool looks just like from that ASAP. That Ferg video on to the next tip okay guys the thing we talked about before the parallax effect is this glitch effect here let's show you how to do that and we're actually gonna go a little frame by frame this is what we're going after here where we have this kind of distortion going on and then just just a bunch of easy little craziness let's show you quickly how to do that within Adobe Premiere so what we're gonna do for this effect in particular is I'm going to hold down alt on my keyboard and that allows you to actually click hold and drag up to create a duplication just like that i'm going to skip back to the beginning here and i'm actually going to select my top layer i'm going to select my top layer i'm going to go over one two three frames 
and then I'm gonna select this whole duplication that I have and just offset it by those three frames. So just drag it over to here. So now this is gonna be three frames behind our original footage. Now I can actually select that footage, go up to our effect controls here in the top left, and I can change our blending mode. So hop over to opacity, open that up if you don't see it, and change your blending mode to something like screen, or even darken I think works a lot better for this. And you'll even see right away if we change it to darken, you really get that craziness going on in terms of that glitchy face. So let's do it with this clip as well change it to darken we don't want any keyframes and right away just check out how cool of a look that is so that's how you can get that glitchy distortion that's going on there hey guys next up we're going to show you how we can recreate this sequence my favorite part of the entire video i'm sure you guys are excited to see this as well um, so what we're going to do we're going to rewind a little bit and let's just play this out it's very fast just like that but we're going to slow this down we're going to make it a lot easier for you so frame by frame you have your footage of the subway that actually zooms out to be within a mask of an eye this is just a natural zooming out from what they already have so they could have used the lens to zoom through here and focus on the eye and they also masked within the mouth here and zoomed out just like that so pretty cool stuff okay guys so i chose three similar clips to create this kind of zoom out transition that we're going to be making so we have our b-roll clip and they use the subway i'm going to be using this footage i shot here in paris um this literally is me just screen recording myself on my webcam um i thought it'd be easier because i'm i'm by myself right now recording this so i needed footage of someone doing that so i just screen recorded it same exact thing me biting down so let's go ahead and thread these all together into a nice little transition so select all these clips and of course you don't have to be doing the same exact um, motions that they're doing in this i'll also leave some other useful references to help you with the process but either way let me show you the bread and butter of actually creating the transition so i duplicated these just because we're going to make this a dynamic link and i want to make sure the footage is here in case something goes wrong i selected all the clips i held down alt dragged up now I'm going to select all those clips we just duplicated, right click and just bring them into After Effects. If you're already using After Effects, just bring those clips that you have into After Effects. Okay guys, so here we are in After Effects. This is actually not that hard to do. It may seem intimidating at first, creating those crazy zooms going backwards, but it's really not that hard once you get the basic understanding of it. So we're going to start on the second clip here with the eye, and I'm actually going to zoom in. We're going to go up and grab our pen tools or click G on your keyboard. And I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to actually mask my eye out. So just draw a simple little mask along your eye, connect it. You're going to want to select your clip, click M and then change that mask from add to subtract just like that. So now it's cutting away what we masked instead of adding it. Next, you're going to want to open up your mask options, feather it a tiny bit, maybe something like two or three. I'm actually going to expand by one pixel and then I'll feather by three. And I think that looks pretty good. If you want, you can actually grab here, maybe expand the mask, fix however you want. Next, what you want to do is right click on that mask and click track mask. It'll automatically prompt your tracker over here. Just click play and that'll do a pretty easy job of track masking as long as you're tracking something that's simple geometry like an eye. That's a pretty easy shape and the footage isn't too shaky. So here's what we got. Nice track of a nice transparent eye. And if we place footage behind this, you'll see that it'll pop up within the eye, which is what we want. So next, what we want to do is we want to grab the footage that we're going to be placing within this eye, which is our b-roll that we have here so let's go ahead and just take this clip drag it over or you can just drag this on top so now our footage with our eye is over top our footage with our b-roll whatever you want to place underneath it to transition into next what you want to do let's click v on our keyboard just to bring back our normal cursor you're going to want to scale this up so you can press s and just go scale and scale it up so that the eye all the way zoomed in to the point where the scene is completely inside of the eye frame. Now, if you shoot this at a higher resolution, it's going to be better in terms of scaling. This is 1080, like I said, shot on a webcam. My face isn't even taking up the full frame. So if you have a better quality camera, you're going to have a better quality result. Let's place it like that. Next, what you want to do is you're going to want to open up your transform options for your top clip. Go ahead and keyframe all those at your beginning position. You're going to want to drag to around halfway just to make it easier. Just click reset and that'll place it back at the original position. So here's what that looks like. Now, the only issue we have here is that the footage, which is behind our eye, isn't actually moving at all. If it was actually within our eye, it would be stuck inside this shape. 
now it, it literally just looks like a different footage shot that's underlaid um, beneath this eye clip. So let's match the movement of that and it's actually very, very easy. You need to just select the clip of your B-roll. Go ahead and go to parent and link and just set that to this top clip here. So I'm going to go ahead and parent it. And now any movement that happens within that top clip will be matched by our B-roll, which is great. But you'll see that it actually scales it up here to actually match in with this. So there's a few ways we can combat that. First thing that we can do is we can actually just kind of grab the edges of this and scale it so that it fits the eye. Um, and you may need to do it like that. But the only downside to that is that it'll completely scale it even more. So, so maybe you are fine with this. This this was shot in 4K, so it doesn't look that bad. But it really is kind of taking away from a lot of what's going on. So the second thing we can do is we can actually scale this down. Let's grab this. Try and make it so that... We can see a little bit more in this scene in general. And then when it gets to the point where it's in the eye and it starts to show these black edges, we're just going to make some easy keyframes. So open up your actual transform options for your B-roll. And I'm going to rename these so you guys don't get confused. We're going to make some keyframes. And now we'll just drag forward. Once you see those black edges, let's go ahead and just grab these and scale it up. And because we're making those keyframes, you'll find that it's going to look a lot easier and better. If you find any little point where you can see that edge like right there, you're going to need to account for that. So let's see what that looks like. And that's pretty cool. So now you can actually have your original sequence size and then it'll just kind of pop into the eye. Now, another thing, something that I kind of messed up on, you want to kind of hold your hand further away from your eye so that while you are zooming out here, it really looks like you're traveling through a whole nother tunnel. This looks a little bit too close to my eye. So if I was filming it again, if someone actually had a camera in front of me, I'd hold it further away from my eye so that, and maybe even have a little bit of zoom on the camera, something that makes it seem like there's a lot more depth between my face and the actual um, circle that I'm creating with my hand. But what you can even do is you can even make it hover here for a few seconds. So we'll create some keyframes. And now we're literally just going to repeat those steps for what we just did with the next clip. So let's bring in the next clip. I don't have a gold grill, but I do have some crooked teeth going on here. So let's zoom into my mouth and we're going to mask around that. So select it. Let's go ahead and create a general mask area. And then we'll do the same thing. Click M on your keyboard. We're going to change the mask from add to subtract and then we'll open up our mask options and we'll add a little bit of a feather, something like that. And since this is kind of mismatching with the top, let's just try and add as much um, space here. And I think that looks about right. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to actually take this footage and we're going to place it on top of everything. Drag it a little bit over so that we can see our footage inside of my mouth which actually sounds pretty weird to say on camera. Um, but what we're going to do now, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to track mask it. Now, I don't know how the track mask will help, will hold up with this. There's not a lot to track onto, um, but let's see what it looks like. If not, we can just do an easy manual. And it's actually doing a lot better. So we're definitely going to have to do some manual around there where I clamp down. So let's delete that. And like I said, using the page up and page down key, you select your layer to see the mask. Since this is already keyframed, we can just manually grab these and try and keep it away from when the teeth kind of clamp down. Let's go ahead and click control shift D. And then on this split part that we just made, we can just click M and delete the mask. So it'll end right there when I clamp down. So that looks good. Now we just need to rearrange the footage, place it within the mask area that we've been creating. So I'm actually going to hold shift and just pre-compose these two parts together so that if we do zoom and stretch things, one part won't be a different scale than the other. So let's just right click click pre-compose on that and I'll just name this clamp click OK and if this is too long we can actually just control D to split that and then it ends about there Control D again so whenever you are filming this don't do like a quick clip try and get as much time of that clip as possible if you are setting up multiple transitions so for example so you want to stand there like this for at least, I would say, 15 seconds to have a full usable clip for an in transition out transition Bring in our clip with the mask clamp. We'll do the same exact thing. Click S, to scale that up. And we're going to go ahead and position this. And we'll scale it up a tiny bit, just like that. Perfect. Open up our transform option for the teeth clamp. Keyframe all those at our starting position. Drag to the end. And we're going to click reset. Here's what that should look like. Bam. 
like I said, again, we're going to have to match this footage to be within the mouth so that it really looks like it's inside of the mouth and it's transitioning out. So to do that, like I said, very easy again. You're going to select here where this footage starts because we don't want to change the scaling of everything beforehand, only at this, only at this section. Control Shift D, this clip is gonna be in the mouth. So we'll rename that in mouth and we'll parent that to clamp just like that. So now as we zoom out, that will be stuck inside of our teeth. And now we just need to scale that up. So let's go ahead and make some keyframes, open this up, open up your transform. Keyframe is already there, which is good to go. Let's drag a bit, let's scale it up, drag a bit and it's gone. So that's perfect. Also another thing that you wanna do, since we're cutting this off and this is parented to a different thing, you'll see that the B-roll in the eye is getting lost behind. So what we need to do is Control Shift D on our B-roll at the beginning that was supposed to be in the eye and then parent this to the in-mouth clip that we have here so that that will still stay tracked. And I ended the track around there. So what I'm gonna do is just make this fade out around there. So open it up, open up your transform. Let's click our opacity to the last we can get it. So like right here, So it'll look like that. Pretty cool, like I said, my favorite part from the tutorial. You can do some really awesome stuff just being creative with it. Um, next, what we wanna- Okay guys, that might've been complicated to a lot of you. A lot of you might've really liked that. Either way, let's keep going through the music video, keep showing you guys how to do a lot of this stuff. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer over to a lot more simple things within Adobe Premiere for those of you beginner watchers that um, maybe were a little bit too confused with that last part. We're gonna transition back in, show you some easy stuff, starting with this little channel blur effect here, this little blue fringing. It's very simple, let's go into Premiere. Let's create another new sequence here so we can start from scratch and let's bring in some footage. And like I said, this one is very simple. You can literally just go click to your effects and presets library. If you're in your, I'm in my color workspace, but if you're in your effects workspace, it may just be pinned right there. Go ahead and search for the channel blur effect. Drop that onto your clip. Select your clip, go up to your effect controls, and then you'll find your channel blur options right there. Now what you can do, now you'll see if we actually bump up our blue blurriness, we have this blue fringing going on here. Now you can also click repeat edge pixels so that you don't have all this yellow coming in. And that way you have that kind of easy blue. Now, if you don't want the yellow going in there in general, what you guys can do is go on my website. There's a $10 preset pack called the Color King Effects Pack. Within that, in that you can actually go ahead and just create a little adjustment layer. And we have a bunch of little preset channel blur looks for you guys if you are interested. So check out the Color King. I think there's some bundle packs which are cool. And these are literally just a bunch of different combinations and looks. Some of them are actually animated, so they'll cycle through different colors. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with those regards. Next, we wanna show you these little pop in and out parts here. So this is very simple. Just using some simple little masking in Adobe Premiere, we can do this. Uh, what they're doing is, like I said, grabbing a few subjects, going over here, making something pop in and then switching it around, zooming through. Okay guys, so back in Adobe Premiere, if you're wondering why my clothes are changed, it's a new day, this has been a long tutorial, so I actually just woke up and we're gonna finish it off. Let's hop into Adobe Premiere and, and we're going to make a little example of what I just showed you, where we're gonna do a little bit of cropping within Premiere pretty easily and just make things pop in and out. So we have our first clip here, I'll make a Control K cut, and then we have our second clip, which we'll place in the background. Let's select our very first clip. Let's go up to effect controls. And then we can actually just grab this little pen tool under opacity. Let's open that up if you're not seeing that. Select that. And we're going to make a little mask around our subject. Click the squiggly key on your keyboard to make that full screen to make the masking a little bit easier. And then we'll just try and make a rough mask going around here. And we're gonna make it just like how it was in the actual music video where it might pop in for only like one frame. Um, and we'll show you a few of these little quick pop in techniques. Like I said, it's kind of like a reverse frame frame in a sense where you're just making a few elements pop in and out very quick. If you want, what you can do is actually bump up the mask feather a tiny bit. And then let's go ahead and grab our clip and just place it in a video layer below. Now I feel like placing this as the background may be a little bit too overwhelming in terms of changing things around too fast. Let's even try and position this in a different place. So it looks kind of cool like this. And then what we're also going to do is I'm going to go up to our effect controls again, selecting my clip. I'm going to keyframe this mask path, drag a bit, and then I'm just going to select the mask and move it over. And we only want this to last a few seconds. So we'll have it 
So we can go maybe a few frames. If you want one frame, that's fine. A few frames, control K to cut. We'll set this back to normal by just deleting the mask off here. And here's what we're getting. Just pops in a different background like that. And then we can control K to cut and then bring in our actual scene. So you just get something like this. So you just get something like this where there's a lot going on pretty fast. Um, but if you have those kind of matching backgrounds, you can create some really cool effects with things popping in and out. And then let's even mask out here. So what we're going to do is we'll move this over for now. Control K to cut to make our starting position. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing. We'll go to opacity over here. Instead of using the pen, we can actually just grab this, this square here. We'll put it on inverted for now. And then we'll just place the corners of this on this actual square. So a quick little reminder of what we're recreating. So we have a few frames of this. And then we'll have something pop within here and then zoom all in just like that. So let's go back into Adobe Premiere. <clears throat> and we basically recreated placing the image within our shape. What I'm going to do is just select both these clips, right click and nest them so that they're one pre-composed clip. And then we can go ahead and just place a little zoom transition. I'm going to go ahead and hold shift, click over on the right arrow key twice, control K, select both of them, right click, nest. And if you guys have any transition presets, I recommend you do pick some up. Place this little zoom hit effect on that nested sequence so that we're zooming in here. You can actually just search for the lens distortion effect within Adobe Premiere. Go ahead and grab that. It should be built in. And then you can go ahead and apply some curvature such as this. You can keyframe it. So place a keyframe on the curvature. Move to where the zoom happens. Bump up that curve. Move to the end and then just reset like that. So that's how you can get those pop in pop out effects within Adobe Premiere and some cool zoom transitions, lens distortion things shown in there. Now the place that I like to use is called freesound.org. I'll leave a link to that below. And basically it's just tons of royalty free sound effects. There's a lot that you can find even just as a basis, whether it's in Adobe Premiere or Adobe Audition, look up some tutorials like that, figure out how to bend these sound effects to use them how you like. So start there and really start implementing this into your videos. Try and make that full immersive experience like we were talking about. So the next thing I want to show you is how we can create these face mix and matches and just a lot of the Photoshop work that they did in the original video. So let's go ahead and just create something new within Photoshop. I'm literally just going to look up person's face yelling and just grab and just right click copy. Obviously it works better to not just use Google images, but to actually have extras or whatever in the scene that you can pull off of, or even maybe the subject of the scene. You can take a lot of pictures on set and do some cool mixing and matching. So I'm going to find some similar images here. Control V to paste that into Photoshop and we'll just try and line it up as best as we can. You can actually select the layer and then just drop the opacity a bit so we can see through it. And then using that, we can try and line these faces up as best as possible. Something like that should work fine for this sort of purpose. Let's go ahead and click OK to actually lock that in. And then what we're going to do is I will select this box tool up in the top left. I'm going to only select his mouth and then I'll click Control J to make that a new layer. We can hide this full layer of his face here. So now we only have his mouth. Let's select the mouth layer, bump the opacity up to 100%, and then we'll control T and try and actually mix and match this a tiny bit better. Now, if you want, you can leave it sloppy like this, where it's basically just something overlaid. And this art form is used a lot throughout a lot of different things. I'll throw some examples on the screen here. You can create some cool looking stuff just doing this in general, and it is very easy to do. If you want, you can polish it up. Maybe grab the pen tool and try and make this look like it's an actual um, mix and mash. So we'll right click, make a selection. We'll do the same thing. We're actually, I'm going to click select, inverse, delete. And then if you want, you can even grab a eraser tool, change your flow and opacity on it a bit, and maybe just try and smooth things in. Now, looking at the original music video, you'll see that we have this slight paper overlay going on here, as well as some stuff like tape, um, a few like dust and scratches that you can see right there. And let's go ahead and show you how we can do that. So you can use Google images for this as well. We'll just look up a little paper outline overlay. If we right click and you'll see this has a transparent background. So if we right click and save image as, as long as this says PNG, then this should actually have transparent. This checkerboard won't show up. So we'll save that as a PNG. And then we'll go ahead and just drag that right into Photoshop. But you can actually go ahead and click this little drop down over here, change around the blending modes and maybe get something like that. The thing we can do, let's try and grab an image like this. So I'll right click, copy and paste that into Photoshop. You want to have that paper rip on the edges 
or between any of the faces that you're creating. Let's just grab our box tool and just delete this part that we don't want. Select, deselect. And that's basically it, guys. Another thing you can add in is tape. Just go ahead and search that on Google, just like everything else we've been searching over. And find one you like, right click, copy it, and control V to paste that within Photoshop. If you have this black background here, you can either change the blending modes or you can just grab this little magic selection tool, click and then delete and then place that wherever you would like on the actual image like that. Hey guys, so we showed you everything from the crazy zooms, the Photoshop work, the parallax effect. We gave you a lot of information throughout this. The last thing I wanna end on, creating this crazy distortion intro. At this point, I'm not gonna bring in any footage. You can if you like, but I'm gonna start with an After Effects. So in my project bin here, I have to drag this out to see it, but there's a new page item which you can click and then we'll bring in a transparent video. And this is just gonna serve as a placeholder for everything we do within Adobe After Effects. So right click on that placeholder, that transparent video, and then click replace with After Effects composition. If you guys want, you can just start with an After Effects if you only use After Effects. Now within After Effects, once that opens up, you can delete the transparent video, and then we'll go ahead and just create something from scratch. So, so I'm actually gonna go and find a little picture of some grass in Google. So we'll just look up some forest grass maybe. Okay, so I found my image. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then I'll just open, show it in a folder and I'll drag it into After Effects just like that. Now here, I'm gonna right click on it, go to transform and then just fit it to the composition. And now we can just add some distortion. A cool effect a lot of you may not know about which is built into After Effects is called CC Blobalize. So look up that. And you'll see it here under distort you can go ahead and drag that in and you'll see it just gives this crazy kind of distortion a lot of you may recognize this look from some of my um, earlier videos where i talked about some of the effects within asap rocky's music videos in particular the lsd video where they use a plugin from sapphire which is literally just called sapphire distort or sapphire rgb distort this is very similar to that now you can change this cutaway if you want to make it more slime like and you can basically use this to tailor your own weird distorted um, look. And the cool thing about this is that you can do it on different channels. So if you want to do it on luminance, you'll all have, you'll have different options. You can even choose a specific color like green. So if we actually look at the original, what they made here, what we're going to do is we're going to animate that texture to move around a bit. So let's hop back into After Effects. Sapphire Distort is very similar with what you can do in terms of this crazy distortion here. That is another option, of course, but this is the free version that comes with it. And it's gonna always look different depending on the image that you're using to start with. Maybe you could just go with a green gradient and mix together things. I'm not sure how they made it, but I am gonna show you the techniques for animating this distortion. So let's go up to where it says our softness and our cutaway. We're gonna keyframe the softness and the cutaway at our starting position move a tiny bit and then we'll just kind of animate it so that things are moving around it doesn't have to be crazy but here is what that animation is looking like which we created and of course you can mix and match anything below this if you'd like it does look very different from what they use but of course they could have used any reference image they could have done a lot with it um, a few other things that you may try in terms of some cool distortion techniques is some turbulent displace a turbulent displace effect if you want to add some kind of waviness and swirliness to what's going on if we change our evolution you'll see what that looks like there you can also change the amount and get some more crazy distortion and stretching drag around a bit maybe for six seconds and we'll add some distortion and now you'll see you're getting some crazy stretching um, a cool interesting background and of course, if you want to, you can even add a little glow effect. If you need any glow flicker preset plugins, all available on my website. I don't want to plug it too much, but it is relevant to what we're speaking of. So look into that if you want. If not, if not, you can of course use the built-in glow in After Effects. Here's what that looks like. That looks pretty cool because it's highlighting specific parts. Um, another cool one, this is the Optical Glow by Red Giant, their new VFX pack, which I'm going to be making a review on soon because they have some really cool stuff there. So shout out to Red Giant. Here's just a little look at what their Optical Glow can do. Um, it's a really beautiful glow, but we'll save the ins and outs of that for the actual review video. You'll see we're getting some really cool, interesting psychedelic swirling, which just makes for a nice background. So I hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial. This was jam packed with a bunch of different things. So I hope it wasn't overwhelming. There's a great mixture of medium, advanced, beginner techniques throughout this entire thing. Some really great, cool stuff. 
stuff, even if you're not well versed with the more complicated effects within this, what I really want you to take away is how they use the sound designs. Some of the easier things they did just to make the visual experience better, the overall flow and planning they had with the video, that stuff will always be more important than the in-depth crazy things that are going on. So make sure you guys get that down first. If you did enjoy this, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. All relevant links will be down in the description. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.